In this problem, we need to find all the zeros of this function here. Well, what does it mean to find the zeros of the function? It means set the function f of x equal to 0 and find all the values of x that makes this true. So we're going to set x cubed minus 5x squared plus 3x minus 15 equal to 0. And now we have to solve this equation. Well, what kind of equation is it? It's degree 3, it's a cubic equation, and there are 1, 2, 3, 4 terms. If, when there are 4 terms, it's always good to try factoring by grouping. It won't work in every case, but if it does work, it's very quick and easy. So you, we're going to group the first two terms and the last two terms. So looking at the first two terms, what's the greatest common factor I can pull out of x cubed minus 5x squared? Well, I can pull out an x squared. And what's it going to leave you with? x minus 5. You can double check. x squared times x is x cubed, x squared times minus 5 is negative 5x squared. Now, whatever the sign is in the middle, you bring it down. And what do these two have in common? What's their greatest common factor? I think that's going to be a 3. And if I factor a 3 out, it's going to leave me with x minus 3 goes into 15 5 times. So, does factoring by grouping work in this case? It only works if this binomial is the same as this. Are these the same? Yes, so it's going to work in this case. So I pull out my common binomial factor, and what's it going to leave from the first term? x squared from the second one plus 3. So it's going to leave you with x squared plus 3. Okay, so now what we have to look at is this can't be factored anymore. Can I factor x squared plus 3? Well, this is a square. This is not a square. It's not the difference of two squares. Therefore, I cannot factor this any further. So I have two factors multiplied together equals 0. So we're going to set each of them equal to 0 and solve the resulting equations. So on the first one, I need to add 5 to both sides. So I'm going to get x equals 5. There's one of my solutions. The second one, I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. Now I get x squared equals negative 3. So now, it, since it's x squared equals negative 3, we're going to take the square root of both sides. And don't forget, you must put plus or minus in front of that square root. And now, what is the square root of a negative number? Remember, that's where we get our i's from, because the square root of negative 1 is i. So it's plus or minus i, the square root of 3. And here are my other two solutions. Because of this plus or minus here, I have one solution is i the square root of 3. The other one is minus i the square root of 3.